We dash in. Just short of Susana, but we get him with the root. And we're able to get him with the basics. Freya's here. We go ahead and taunt her. That might have been a very early taunt. We use our one. We get the knockup. We get the root. We're going to keep chunking her. Easy. Easy peasy. So the movement speed from Stone Cutting Sword also just helps you catch up to people. Super helpful. Loki comes in, we're going to knock him up and we're going to root him. We get the pick with the help from the hell. What a do, skibidi boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play Erlong Shen in solo. If you are new to the channel, I upload six to seven times a week. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If you are a returning viewer, Erlong Shen is an auto attack based warrior he can also be an ability based warrior he's a very flexible character you can play him solo assassin support warriors you can usually build almost anything on so you can kind of play them almost anywhere but let's go ahead and jump into erlong's kit erlong's one is going to open his third eye and he's going to be able to see his enemy better increasing his physical power on his basic hits. Whenever this buff ends, that's when this ability goes on cooldown. Erlong Shen's two, he's going to throw his spear. It's going to land and there's gonna be a inner circle and an outer circle. If you can hit the enemy with the inner circle, they're gonna be rooted for a couple seconds. And then Erlong Shen's three, this is his dash. He has the choice of either transforming into a turtle or a mink. If you want to transform into the turtle, you need to bring your cursor a little closer to Erlong. And if you want to turn into the mink, you need to move the cursor away from Erlong. The turtle is going to give you a shell that is going to give you some bonus health. And then the mink is going to give you increased attack speed. So let's go ahead and run over to our lane. We are going to be matched up against this Horus. Not too concerned. I think Horus is a better support than he is a solo laner. I thought I was going against Loki this game. It would have made more sense to have Horus support, Loki solo. Because Horus is just going to let me chunk him in my minions, so I will take that all day. Looks like he's going to run under tower, so I'm going to clear this wave and then make a play for the Totem of Q. We might get him with her too and then go for the totem kill. So Erlong Shen's passive is his dog is going to attack with him, dealing 15% of his basic attack, but it's also going to remove 1% of the enemy's health. This works for gods and for minions. It does not work for objectives. And then Erlong Shen's ultimate, he's going to taunt enemies towards him. While he has taunted them, he's going to get increased damage mitigation, He's going to get a base heal, and then he's also going to heal for 15% of his total health. So Erlon's got a little bit of lockdown, he's got a knockup, he's got a root, he can increase his physical power, and he's also got a taunt with a heal. We get the knockup with our three. By tagging the forest, we're able to get all the minions to group up together. That's too bad. We're gonna go ahead and proxy a wave. And it might be a little bit too early to be doing this. Especially if we don't group up the minions properly. So right here, I am proxying too early. I think that is the conclusion of analyzing this. I just lost too much health, it took me too long. By the time I cleared it, the next wave was here. So I'm just going to tag this wave and start to fall back. Bakasaur is rotating towards me. This Horus is one shot. We're going to rotate back. Just kind of reset everything into the wave or into the lane. We're able to get the Horus. He overstayed. So in terms of... Well, hold on. We might have to help our Bakasaur out. 
Looks like this is on is gonna run, so we're gonna invade their blue. So in terms of the build, we're gonna be going into Warrior's Blessing, and then we're gonna start the tier one of Stone Cutting Sword, and then we're gonna go into Ninja Tabai for the attack speed. We're gonna keep riding with Bakasaur, go for our blue. We do have enough money for the boots that we want, but we want to back at a time where we're not going to lose any gold or XP. So with Erlong Shen, I like to level up the two first. We're going to have to back up because Horus got us pretty weak. I like to level up the two first. It's going to do more damage reliably than the three. So the turtle 3 does less damage than the maxed out 2, but the turtle or the 3 minx does more damage than the maxed out 2. It's just that the 2 is very reliable and you can get it off very easily. So we're going to go ahead and back, pick up our boots, buy a potion or 2, and then head back to the lane using our relic teleport An cliff. Enemy has been slain. So now that we've got some attack speed online, we are looking to trade with this horse as often as possible. We get the root, we're going to use our wand to get the increased power and knock him up. Now we're going to focus on the minions. He stunned us, so we took a lot of minion damage right there, but we're just going to keep fighting into him. We do have our ultimate if we feel like we are getting too weak. We get the root, we're going to enhance our power with our one. Horse is missing a lot of basics. So now we're going to chunk him. That increased power looks very nice. We get the root. We get the taunt. Probably didn't need the taunt, but we wanted to get the health heal just in case he turned on us. We also had our dash in that situation, so we probably could have just dashed instead of ulting. So we are going to be going into Stone Cutting Sword. Stone Cutting Sword is a very atypical pick for solo lane. I feel like it's not picked up that much. But let's talk about kind of first items in solo lane. So generally speaking, if an Erlong Shen were to go against an Erlong Shen, and I were to buy an offensive item, and the other Erlong Shen were to buy a defensive item, in most situations, the Erlong Shen that bought a defensive item is going to have a better time in lane. Even though my Erlong Shen has more offense because I bought an offensive item, he is negating some of that, and then I'm not negating any of his damage, so his damage is actually going to be comparable to mine. But if you were to get Stone Cutting Sword, this is kind of the exception. Because assume that the enemy gets a Breastplate of Valor, that is going to be around 60-65 protections. Well, if you get the Stone Cutting Sword and you can hit them with the basic attack three times, you're going to remove 30 of those protections and give them to yourself. So you're pretty much having how effective their Breastplate of Valor is, and you're taking half those stats for yourself. So now, the breastplate that was giving 65 is only giving 30 or 35, and now we have an additional 30 protection, plus we also have this movement speed and 50 power. So I think the stone cutting sword is a great item if you just plan on hanging out in solo lane and trying to get an advantage or get a pick on your enemy. It's such a large power spike once we get it online. It's going to help us offensively and defensively. It's going to make it to where if somebody's trying to fight us, they really cannot unless they have a teammate. Really strong item. Do not see it picked up in solo lane that much. And with Erlong, I feel like he's kind of flexible enough. He's mobile, he has a shield, he has a taunt with a health regen. That you can kind of get away with the no defense first item and go straight into stone cutting sword. We're gonna go ahead and rotate mid because we were just holding horse at his tier 2 tower. Not a lot happening there. We get Freya's beads, we're gonna fall back. 
we have a hell of this game. So unless they go anti-heal, we're going to win it. Pretty much as simple as that. We're going to leave the Harpies for Bakasaur. We don't want to take any of his farm. We're just going to move to our blue buff. Start hitting this bad boy. Does not look like Bakasaur is going to rotate over. We pick up our blue. We have enough money for Stone Cutting Sword. And we have our Teleport Glyph back. So we should be backing relatively soon. Getting Stone Cutting Sword is going to be a huge power spike. That's one of his dashes. We're going to get the knockup. We're going to enhance our power with our one. I think he's going to be able to get away. Don't really have the mana. And I'm also on cooldown. Just going to clear this wave. I think there's a wave for him coming right at that tower line. So we got the stone cutting sword. And just watch how quickly we can chunk now that we have it. After going into the stone cutting sword, we're going to be going into the sludge. Sludge has a lot of great stats that we're interested in. Physical protections, magical protections, crowd control reduction. And it's just going to give us a lot of health and a little bit of power. Get ready for the chunk, Horus. You don't have the mana to escape. Oh, yes, he does. Never mind. Unfortunate. I did not expect him to have that dash. We're going to force him back. So after this wave, we are going to rotate mid. Although it looks like mid is really far pushed up. We would not get a lot out of the situation for rotating mid right now. Root. We're gonna clear this wave. Now we're gonna rotate, see if his blue's up. It is not, so we're gonna go for the Harpy Camp. If you are in solo lane and you're pushing somebody to the tier 2 and they're kind of just hiding in it, you want to weave into their jungle and see if you can steal any camps from them. It will increase your level and it will hurt the enemy jungler. Ooh, those chunks. That was three, maybe four basic attacks. And he was less than half health. Alright, calm down already. Friends don't leave friends behind. We may be staying in this lane just a little bit too long. Luckily, their jungler has not really come over to try to rotate on us. We're going to check their blue. Their blue is here. We're going to use our one to increase our physical power. Your middle tower is under attack. Now we're going to rotate mid. It looked like Freya was just here, but she went right. We're going to go ahead and rotate right. We might be able to clean up one or two of the enemies. We dash in. Just short of Susana, but we get him with the root. And we're able to get him with the basics. Freya's here. We go ahead and taunt her. That might have been a very early taunt. We use our one. We get the knockup. We get the root. We're going to keep chunking her. Easy. Easy peasy. So the movement speed from Stone Cutting Sword also just helps you catch up to people. Super helpful. Loki comes in, we're gonna knock him up and we're gonna root him. We get the pick with the help from the hell. We're just gonna tank this tower for a little bit, back it up. Wait for the minion wave and now we're able to get this tower. Gold Fury is open. We're going to keep pushing in this wave, clear all the minions. Horse is on our left tower. We do have our teleport in just a second. We're going to teleport across the map. Let's see if we can prevent Horse from getting it. Oh, he's going to use his ult, and we're able to get him. He, I think he would have been better off dashing out instead of trying to ult out.
we're gonna go ahead and drop our blue we could push left line if we wanted because the horus is down for another 10 or so seconds Take this jungle but it looks like we're just gonna back because we have 3600 gold in hand so we're gonna buy the sledge and we're gonna start working on the void shield they have four physical characters so we're gonna prioritize physical over magical we got the sledge because the sledge just has Your great stats. We're going into Enemy void because void is really going to help us out against this team composition. The sledge is kind of just a catch all good item. Void shield is specifically for the four physical people on their team. So the void shield is going to increase our physical power, it's going to on increase our physical protections, on and it's also way. going to reduce these enemies' physical protections enemies by 10%. So we're removing 10% of their physical protection, and then we're removing an additional 30 physical protections after we land 3 basic attacks with our stone cutting sword. We can move a lot of protections off of these squishy characters. So I mean just 30 off of a squishy character who probably doesn't have any protections can bring them from about 60 protections to about 30 protections. And then attacking a squishy that only has 30 protections, you do a lot of damage. We do plan on picking up Quinsai at some point in this build and that will be kind of our final tank shredding option. We get the root off onto the Freya, we're able to dash through her and get the pick. Suzanne is going to dash away. We are all grouped up in mid, so I feel like we could probably just push this. We're going to go for the play onto the Loki and use her taunt. Maybe we hit it? It looked like he was out of range, but he did walk towards us. We're going to stick to the Phoenix. Jinwei is here. Still just sticking to the Phoenix. Now we're going to try to stick to the Horus. We're able to get the pick there. We're going to go ahead and dash out using our turtle so the shell will absorb the shot. Still kind of just tanking for the team. Looks like we are going to be able to get it. Very long process because we do not have any minions in the Phoenix Circle. We're going to go ahead and invade their red, pick that up for ourselves since we are having a very aggressive game. We're going to go ahead and back, we have enough money for our void shield and we also have our teleport up. Oh my goodness, Frey is here. The Deuce ult, unfortunately, does not look like it connected with anyone. We're going to back it up just a little bit more and oh, we're going to go clean up this minion wave and right. So we took that wave, that was a pretty fat wave. I bet you Sylvanas would have gone from 12 to 13 if we left it for him. So after going into Void Shield, we are going to be going into Pestilence. Freya has a ridiculous amount of healing. Horus has a little bit of heals. I think that the offensive anti-heal option, so like a Brawler's Beat Stick or a Toxic Blade, would actually be better. However, we don't have any magical defense, Freya will chunk us if we don't get some, and the anti-heal will passively help us throughout the game. I'm not sold on this item, but I felt like it was a good fit for how we were building so far. Some other options for magical defense would be Genji's Guard, it would be Runic Shield, or the Oni Guard. Oh, their whole team's rotating on us, so we're going to use our Turtle and Skedaddle on out of there. We get rooted up. We have our ult, we taunt four people. We get the root onto four people, so Honest comes in. Our team does a whole lot of damage. A couple ults were expended. Looks like Susanna was able to get out and avoid a majority of that. We're going to get the knock up onto the Horus. We're going to get the root onto the Susanna. Try to stick to the Susanna. That's his dash. We're going to move towards the minion wave. This might have been a bit of a misplay. I feel like we should be trying to fight the enemy instead of worrying about the minions. 
for our second relic, we bought Shell. I think we'd be better off with a point. Bakasaur is able to get the pick onto Susano. I miss my route onto the Jinwei. Me and Baka are in a bad spot, so we're going to have to fall back. Right now, poor assault. He dashes in. Does not look like there's a lot of follow up. We get the root off. Our team is able to clean up. We're going to move to the Pyromancer. Baka and myself should be able to burn this down relatively quickly. I don't think we could get the Fire Giant right now. So we're going to make our way to our blue buff. And now we're going to go ahead and back, finish off our Pestilence. You never know what Should probably pick up some wards, and we do. Do we place way. the wards? That's the question. On my way. Be careful Anybody can buy a ward, but it takes a real smite player to place a ward. Cancel that. We're going to move into the right jungle, see what's going on over here. We see two people, we're coming up behind them. We were able to get the pick onto the gold here, we get the root onto the Susano. We still have our dash. We're going for it. He blinks away. Their middle phoenix is back up. I think we could very easily push this as a team. Our team went mid already, we're going to move up through the jungle and then go mid. Get the root onto the forest. We get the knock up and our team is able to clean it up. I'm just gonna move straight for the Phoenix. We're able to get the Phoenix. We're gonna dash in, go for the Suzano. Able to get the pick onto him. Taunt two people. Unfortunately, Prey used your beads. Generally, the combo would be to turtle in, ult somebody. Then use your one, use your, I mean, use your two to get the root, use your one to get the basics off. But I think this is going to be the end of the game. Could be wrong. No, they're going to defend here. Whoops. So their Titan is extremely tanky because they still have a tier two tower on each side. The Titan gains health and protections based on how many structures the enemy still has left. So because there's two towers and two phoenixes, the titan is very tanky. If we could get these towers down, the titan would lose a lot of protections and he'd be a lot easier to burn down. We're just gonna burn this tower down. No need to worry about Horus. Bakasaur says it's time to retreat. I don't know if I agree with that. I'm gonna push this lane, clear this wave at least. We are going to rotate away from left because Horus was just going to be able to hold under Phoenix. Looks like the two people in right may have overstepped. We're going to rotate and see if we can clean them up. Trying to save our dash for the right time. We unfortunately miss everything, but we get the pick onto Freya, and our Sylvanas is able to get the pick onto the Susano. So now we have two healers around us. We have our Sylvanas and our Hell. I feel like we could pretty confidently push the right units, but it looks like they're going to back, so we're going to back as well. We are going to sell our Warrior's Blessing and go into Quinsai. Quinsai is going to remove a percentage of the enemy's health every time you land a basic attack, plus her plus Erlong's dog is also going to remove 1% health. So if you are attacking this Horus per se, and you use your basic attack, Erlong can enhance his basic attack with his 1, so it's going to increase his power a little bit. Stone Cutting Sword is going to be removing some protections. Quinsai is going to be removing some percentage of their health. And your dog is also going to be removing 1% of their health. So you can really shred with Erlong Shen. Plus the increased attack speed from his mink on his 3. 
Erlong is just fantastic at attack speed. He can also be very effective at ability based builds. We're gonna get Rudolph, just kind of eat his ultimate, get the taunt off. Medusa is able to use her ultimate and destroy the Susano. We're just gonna walk in, start tanking for the team. Does not look like the team was that interested in participating. We get our root off onto the horse. We're gonna fall back a little bit. They had a pretty good defense. We're gonna rotate mid, see if we can't push a fire minion wave, and then also rotate on the An team fight. Has been slain. Oh no, it looks like we're just going all the way right. Gonna need a hospital. We're gonna You've split push. Begun, haven't you? They were warned. An enemy has been slain. And I think that is going to be the game. Well, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you feel like you learned anything at all, please check out the channel. I've got a lot of videos out there covering Smite in a very similar format. So if you like this one, maybe you'll like the other ones. These stats will be posted in just a second. Be sure to subscribe for more content. Thank you all for stopping by. I'll catch you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.